Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we're talking about how to structure your program a bit better to deal with HTML parsing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select everything in my file, in my middle HTML file, and go and create a new file that I'm going to call uh, class HTML parsing, for example. And I'm going to paste it all in. And what I want to show you is a way that you can structure this so that instead of just single functions, you have something a bit more self-contained, a class. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of this, except the HTML, all of this into a class that I'm going to be calling parsed item, for example. And this is going to be a class to take in an HTML page or part of it and find properties of an item in it. Okay. So it's going to take in a page or potentially a, a section of a page and it's going to do self dot soup equal beautiful soup of page and HTML dot parser. Okay. The good thing about this is that now let's say you have a page that has many of these articles. You could create a parsed item for each of those articles. And you the only thing you'd have to do is sort of get the article tag and pass it into here. And then this item would be something that represents that section of the page. But of course, these functions all have to be in there, right? They all have to take in self, 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 and self. And uh, you don't need two spaces anymore. Pep8 doesn't like that inside the class. Then instead of soup, you're going to do self.soup. And what's happening now is that for this soup that you've created when you passed in this portion of the, of the page to this class, you're going to be able to find the name and the link and so forth for each item. So if you had many articles, you could just give each one to this class and this class would find inside the article, the item name or the item link and so forth. Now, in order to make them actually find things instead of printing things out, we're going to return. So instead of print, we're going to return and you're going to see how easy it becomes to deal with um, all this stuff. I'm going to delete this print matcher group there. And then we're going to return here as well. You're going to see how easy it is to deal with this stuff now. Because all you have to do in order to, to, to um, get something out of this item is to say parsed item, item HTML. This can be your item and then say something like print item dot find item rating. Then run the file and you get three out. So what's the benefit of this? Well, you've done encapsulation now, essentially. You've encapsulated all the logic. You've stored all the logic away inside this class. And now you can reuse the class for each of the articles you've got on your site. You don't have to sort of wonder about trying to get any uh, drilling down into specific articles using more complex locators. The, what you could do is, if you have a large site with many articles, say something like soup.find all article, and then for each, uh, parsed item p for p in that. Something along these lines. We're going to look at exactly how it would go, but I just want you to see that then you would end up with a list of these parsed items and each item would be able to find its own rating or price and so forth. If you want to make it even better, you can just remove this find item because the class is already called item. You know, you don't need find item things. All you need to do is now the items rating, the items price, the items link and the items name. And you have yourself essentially something that could come from HTML, or it could be a class that maybe comes from a JSON or something like that. It's a nice API for the data. If you want to make it even better, you can add a at property tag in front of each. And this is now very simple item dot name. And that's that's where you have at the end a light in the attic. 
Now, when you're interacting with an item, you don't know if this is coming from a database or if it's coming from a CSV file or if it's coming indeed from some HTML that you're parsing. You don't know and you, you shouldn't have to care when you're doing that. So this is a great way of making your items much easier to work with when you're, when you're writing something in a different part of the program. So I just wanted to quickly tell you about this method of structuring your uh, parsing so it's a bit easier uh, to work with. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to look at another improvement you can make, which is much shorter, and then we'll be moving on. I'll see you there.